Anger, frustration, and outrage. Where the hell is Prentice? The, the giraffe's, giraffe's head sat there in the bar. Bill Bixby, I'm the man. Hello, you. What are you doing out on a night like this? You should be snuggling indoors by the fire, not out here in the snow. Where do you live, cat? Here? On the house at the end? Hmm, that's where old man Balthus lives. Come on, cat. Let's go and get you indoors. I haven't seen the old man in years. Who's there? Who's calling on me on this Christmas night? Mr. Balthus, it's Sophie White from down the road. Is this your cat? I found him in the road. Where did you go to, I can growl? I've got a treat for you. Come on inside. Well, thank you, Sophie. I was worried about her. Snow scents are a bit loopy, you see. Now then, will you come in and warm up and you can tell me what you've been doing with your life? Sure. Please take a seat and let me feel your face, my dear. My, you have grown up, haven't you? A very pretty girl, I would wager. If only I could see you. When was the last time we talked? It must have been before I went blind. You were only a girl then. How old are you now? I'm 19. I've come back from uni to see my parents. I just fancied a walk after Christmas dinner when I found your cat. Eigengrau seems to like you. So what are you studying at uni? Podcasting. I'm supposed to be working on an assignment, but I can't get inspired with all my family around. Perhaps you could help me, Mr. Balthus. I'm not sure about that, Sophie, my dear. Well, you've led such an interesting life, judging by all these photographs everywhere. First things first. Would you like Quality Street? What did you go for? Cherry Cup. Excellent. Now, could you help me, Sophie? There are two packages there on the side that were delivered some time ago. Could you open them for me? I'll never know what they are otherwise. This card says, Happy Christmas, Grandpa. Lots of love, Mo. It's an electric razor. Looks expensive. Good little Mo. He always remembers his old Grandpa. There's a picture of him somewhere on the mantel. Have a look for me, Sophie. Well, there's a picture of you outside a shop. What's that say? A Balthus Bazaar? No, not that one. There's a picture of you and Eigengrau in a taxi cab. Balthus cars. No, not that one either. Well, there's a picture of a rabbit on stage. What's this? Britain's Got Talent? That's the one. That's when little Mo went on earlier this year. What? Your grandson's a rabbit? I know, I know. At first I thought he was just a special little boy with big ears, but he turned out to be a rabbit. But a very special rabbit to boot. He used to complain about having strange dreams, about flying away into the night, of meeting a native Indian chief who taught him how to survive in the spirit world. How to be a spirit walker. An Indian chief? Yo Kiro Taco Bell. Lenape tribe. Anyway, Little Mo always referred to his special powers as tippy toes. He wanted to try and explain what it was like, so he went on to Britain's Got Talent. So, who are we here? My name's Mo. How old are you, Mo? I'm 
sweet. Where do you live, no? Uh, in Naga, uh, um, Galagalagu tree. Where's that? I live in London. So, no. What are you going to do for us tonight? I'm not sure we've had a rabbit on this show before. I'm going to do a routine that I wrote myself about flying through the night skies called Dippy Toe Simon. Well, off you go then, no? One, two, three. Dippy, dippy, dippy toes, dippy toes, dippy toes, dippy, dippy, dippy toes, dip, dip toes. Dippy, dippy, dippy toes, dippy toes, dippy toes, dippy, dippy, dippy toes. I'm sorry, Mo. That's just rubbish. <laughs> I just wanted you to all know how to do tippy toes that small. <laughs> Mr. Black, Dr. Shaw is ready for you now. Please go to room two. Hello, Mr. Black. Please take a seat. Are you sure? Yeah, seating is free on the NHS. I'm Dr. Shore. I've flown in specially from Canada to review your case. Dr. Proctor suggested your condition may be of interest to me in light of my special research. Special research? What the hell's wrong with me? I thought I just had a bout of gout. It's not a bout of gout, or a twinge of mania, or even a touch of thrush. I think it's something far more interesting. Tell me, Mr. Black. What are your symptoms? Well, it all started with strange recurring dream. I'd wake up feeling freezing cold with snow on my Batman pyjamas in the morning. Batman pyjamas? This is more serious than I first saw. Now, tell me about your dream. Well, I go to sleep and a little rabbit comes up and talks to me. He says that he will teach me tippy toes if I will help him. We then fly through the night sky, through the snow, until we get to North America somewhere. We then stand on a deserted road by a frozen lake and I have a shotgun in my hand. We just wait and wait and then we fly back and I wake up freezing. Hmm. Interesting, tell me. Has there been any change in the pattern of the dream recently? Because I've been studying the results of your brain MRI scan and I've found a legion of your hypothalamus. Look here, it's a little bright splodge. Here. Hmm, it looks like a rabbit. Indeed. And I think you are susceptible to shamanism. You've been selected by a spirit or a shaman, and you have inadvertently become a saboteur. For what purpose? We can only guess. Has the pattern of the dream changed? Well, the last couple of weeks, when we were standing by the dark, freezing road in deep snow, a car approaches. It's a very expensive big car. I wave to stop the car in the darkness. When it stops, I walk over to the driver. When he opens the window and says, Are you okay, buddy? I shove the shotgun in his face and tell him to get out the car. Go on. What's next? He opens up the car door. He's a well-dressed man with a square head. He looks like me. He looks scared. I tell him to get out the car. He says, What do you want? And I tell him, Walk. That's all. He says, Where? I gesture with the shotgun. The frozen lake, he asks. The frozen lake, I say. He then starts to walk out onto the ice. Just me and a rabbit watching my doppelganger walking out into the darkness. Then I wake up. So, Sophie, my dear, would you like another quality street? What have you gone for this time? Coffee crisp. Mr. Balthus, what do you miss seeing the most now that you're blind? Hmm, interesting question. Obstacles, mainly. So, tell me about these photos, Mr. Balthus. The shop and the taxi cab. How did you manage all that if you can't see? Well, I came by Eigengrau here. She's my guide cat. It was a little tricky in the early days. When we used to go out, we used to spend quite a lot of time sitting under parked cars at first. But then Eigengrau built up my confidence. You see, I had a shop to run. A special shop. A magic shop. It was a shop of dreams. Dreams? Well, costumes mainly. And I suspect drug abuse as well. Anyway, we had loads of costumes and our customers would come in, go into the changing room and have a magical adventure, depending on what costume they selected. It was going well until I went blind, and then I couldn't keep track of what was going on in there. I had to leave it all to Eigengrau. Anyway, all was good until our best customer stopped coming. We always wondered why, and we had to close the shop in the end. Didn't we, I can growl? Yeah. So, who was this customer, Mr. Balthus? His name was Mr. Ben. I'd always offer a new costume, a cowboy, a spaceman, an orthodontist or some such, and he would always say yes. 
but I knew he always went into the changing room with another one, always the same costume. I couldn't see what he was up to in there, but I did start to notice certain wear and tear on the costume he always selected when I had it dry cleaned. Wear and tear? On what costume? Well, I noticed that after Mr. Bear had been in, that the trousers were always wet, and Ivan Grau suspected that he was incontinent, didn't you? No. We started to call him Mr. Benner Lady. What was the costume, Mr. Balthus? A Nazi SS Colonel uniform. I wonder what Mr. Ben was up to in that changing room. Halten Sie! Papieren bitte! Ah, tut mir aber leid, Herr.